Demoman is the strongest class in TF2, and there's a one word explanation damage. Okay, okay, I might have overdone that part a bit, but seriously, an effective demo man is a nightmare for the other team, especially when that demo man has a medic. So besides a way too long montage, what actually makes demo man so strong? And of course, how can you utilize his strengths to help you in a casual or even a competitive environment? Demo man is a generalist. This means he is powerful on both attack and defend, and he can transition between the two quickly. His high damage area of effect weapons allow him to control large areas, punishing anyone who steps into his literal minefield. And of course, once he detonates, he can simply replace the trap. And don't you forget, if an enemy finds their way around your stickies, you still have a trusty grenade launcher. Demoman is also an effective attacking class. His reliable mid-range damage has the potential to clear out a defending team. Because of this, Demo is arguably the best offensive uber target in the game. Despite all of this, I rarely see Demo Man in casual. Well, at least stock Demo Man is a rare sight. This is completely theoretical, but I believe not many people play Demo Man because his weaknesses can be difficult to play around. He is very vulnerable when in an up-close fight. Without a medic, he can easily get two shot by shotguns, rocket launchers, stickies, etc. He can also accidentally damage himself with his own explosives when forced to take an up close fight. Good demos know this and will use their map knowledge and sticky bomb launcher to avoid these confrontations altogether. To better understand this, let's take a look at this competitive match. The other team has the point to overtime, which means that our team has to push. The other team is down three players, so it is a good time to get forward to help my team capture the point. Once we capture the point, I know I need to back off because the other team will be pushing soon. There is only 12 seconds left until my team wins now. I trap the objective because I know the other team has no choice but to start tapping soon. Once I have the point trapped, I start to spam pipes while I wait for the perfect time to debt. Luckily for me and my team, I am able to get two important frags with my trap, winning us the round. If I was still standing where I was when we were capping the point, I would have likely died and lost the round. I would have either died to this heavy or to this engineer and demo man since I would not have been able to look in both directions. Knowing your most effective range and understanding the flow of the game is paramount when it comes to doing well as demo at any level of play. You will eventually learn these things by just playing the game. However, there is something you can do now to begin dishing out that sweet, sweet demo man damage. Before I can continue, I have to put in a bit of a disclaimer. This guide is focused towards those with a more competitive mindset. You can use whatever loadout you like. For the sake of brevity, I will only be covering weapons I consider to be competitively viable. That being said, if you want to be the most effective demo man, you should really run the Sticky Bomb Launcher. Despite being in the secondary slot, the Sticky Bomb Launcher is more of a primary weapon for the demo man. I'll talk more about this in the next section, but trust me on this for now. You should also run one of the grenade launchers. This gives you a choice between the stock grenade launcher, the iron bomber, the loose cannon, or the lock and load. In my opinion, the best out of all four of these is between the stock grenade launcher and iron bomber. This is really a matter of personal preference. The only real difference between stock and iron bomber is the explosion radius and the rollers. You might have heard that the iron bomber is objectively better because of the projectile hitbox size. This isn't accurate anymore. Valve fixed this bug in July of 2022. The lock and load is also a viable option even in a competitive setting. I would not recommend the lock and load to newer demo man players because of the different projectile speed and lower ammo count. However, if you put the time in to learn this weapon, it is very strong. This weapon feels more reliable for single target damage because of the faster projectile. This weapon is also surprisingly good for dealing with those pesky scout players. The lock and load does come with some pretty huge downsides. No rollers and a 25% smaller explosion radius. And this 25% doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it's a huge difference. And yes, I do actually get kills with rollers. Speaking of luck-based frags, the loose cannon seems good on paper, and it is good, especially for certain niche cases, but I find it to be the weakest of the grenade launchers. There are a couple of reasons for this. Firstly, I have found that the charge up time means that you are even more vulnerable in a close range encounter. If you miss one up-close shot, you have to charge another shot. 
This essentially means the longer amount of time between fire and the weapon, the closer you are to your opponent. Take a look at this clip of me fighting a scout with the loose cannon. Once I realize I'm getting hit from up close, I start charging up a shot. I miss, and then I die before I even have time to fire a second cannon. Here's a clip of me fighting the same scout with the lock and load. Yeah, I think you get the point here. The loose cannon's projectile also has a much shorter effective range when compared to the other grenade launchers. Alright, I'm done being a negative Nancy, the loose cannon isn't an entirely bad pick. You can one-shot light classes all the time if you can consistently hit double donks. You can also send enemies flying with this weapon. Wait, 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 hang on, hang on, stop, pause the video. I've seen these two before. For melee weapons, the bottle or any stock variant is fine. You can also run the half Satoichi if you have a medic and you want to be able to build Uber. The Scotsman Skullcutter is also not a bad choice, but I personally avoid it due to the slow movement speed while deployed. In all honesty, melee weapon choice doesn't really matter on Demoman since you should really be avoiding using your melee. I personally recommend avoiding the Islander and the Persian Persuader since they don't really give you a big upside and they come with big passive downsides. Demoman greatly benefits from having a pocket medic. In Highlander, Sixes, and Prolander, Demoman is a combo class. This means he is one of the main heal targets for the team's only medic. The reason Demoman is so good when he's getting pocketed is because it allows him to be more aggressive, which, simply put, allows him to deal more damage than usual. Of course, in a casual environment, you do not need a pocket medic to do well. Your playstyle will remain relatively the same, you will just need to be more passive than if you had a good medic. That being said, you have two main jobs as a demo, regardless of if you have a medic. Damage dealing and area denial. So how do you deal damage as demo man? I know I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. Your stickies are your primary weapon. The reason for this is pretty simple. Stickies are a more reliable source of damage than pipes. Stickies have a higher maximum damage than pipes, and they are easier to aim since you don't have to directly hit your opponent. They can even help you when you miss. You can think of a miss sticky as a landmine that can prevent your enemy from moving in a certain direction. The simple trick is to not detonate your stickies unless you are sure you will do damage with them. Take a look at this clip for example. I missed two stickies while shooting at this scout. I panic and missed three pipes. Luckily those stickies I missed earlier were actually totally calculated. Well, at least this one was. Again, the trick here is to not immediately debt your miss stickies. Pipes do not work this way. If you miss a pipe, the roller usually does nothing, and even if it does, it's going to do less damage than a sticky bomb. So if stickies are your primary, when should you be using pipes? This is an extremely nuanced question, and I will be going into more detail about each item in your kit later in this video. For now, just know that pipes are generally your backup weapon. If you run out of stickies but have a golden opportunity to deal lots of damage, try switching to your pipes. You can also switch to your pipes when you find yourself in a very close range fight. You will develop an intuition for when to switch to your pipes over time, but for now I encourage you to try and use stickies often. I guess that telling you stickies are your primary weapon isn't really the best way to teach you how to deal damage as Demo Man. Luckily, your other main focus while playing Demo is controlling area, and if you are effective at controlling area that the other team wants to be in, oh boy, the damage will practically come to you. Your main area denial weapon is the Sticky Bomb Launcher, more specifically Sticky Bomb Traps. While I certainly encourage you to get creative with your traps, there are a few general rules to follow when placing one. Firstly, your trap should be difficult for the other team to spot. Stickies that are completely visible can still deal damage and even get kills, and they are also a useful deterrent. However, the best way to guarantee that your trap will get a kill is if it is hidden from the other team. Secondly, your trap should cover where you anticipate the other team will go. For example, a trap covering your own spawn door will achieve nothing because the other team will never be walking in or out of your spawn. The best way to ensure that your trap will be useful is if you trap the objective or a common route to an objective. The trap can also be in a choke point on a commonly traveled path, and honestly I know I've been saying this a lot but it's true, the more time you spend playing demo the better sense you will have of this. Thirdly, your trap should be in a spot where you can safely watch it. While it is possible to have a teammate watch a trap for you, it is better to watch it yourself. You are able to set traps that you don't have to watch by paying attention to the objective indicator on your HUD or your sticky count. Okay. 
You can also get lucky sometimes and get an accidental trap kill or even a skillful blind debt. Lastly, an unexpected sticky trap is more likely to get a frag than one that is used all the time. After getting a kill with a trap, try using a different spot. Not only will you get a feel for what works and what doesn't, but you will really start to play mind games with your opponents. This being said, a commonly used sticky trap can still be effective. It can buy you and your team time by forcing the other team to either clear the trap or find a way around. Of course, even experienced players can die to common sticky traps as well. At the end of the day, I encourage you to come up with your own creative trap locations. Getting a frag or two with a sticky trap you have never seen used before can be extremely satisfying. Outside of sticky traps, there are still ways you can deny area as a demo man. While it is harder to pull off, sticky spam is a great way to prevent enemies from going where they want to go. Take a look at this competitive clip for example. I managed to force this soldier off high ground with my spam, but our medic is forced to use uber. I know red team will want to run away from our uber, so I bomb at their most likely exit, choke. Their medic and scout were being indecisive about leaving and just stood in choke, and I am able to completely deny their exit. Here's another clip where sticky spam is able to completely lock down an area. Our team's uber was pretty bad, so I start to back off. I see that my scout is about to get on the point, so I start to spam stickies at red team's route to the point. Red panic since they will lose the round if they don't stop the cap, and they all make a beeline for the point, taking 430 damage in the process. My team is easily able to clean up and win the round. Another way that you can deny area is a bit more situational, but still worth mentioning. You can spam grenades at a choke point in order to temporarily prevent the other team from pushing or force them to take damage while they walk through. It's difficult to explain how I know when to use stickies or pipes, since it's honestly an intuition that you build over time. I guess the best way to describe it is if you have an opportunity where the other team is very clumped up, but not enough time to wait for your sticky bomb arm time, you should use pipes. So adding all this together, what does a general demo man gameplay loop look like? If my team is defending, I will trap off common routes and or the objective. When I have traps put down, I'll stand in a safe place to watch them. I'll also keep an eye out for spies and spam pipes at a choke point or anything that moves. Once the other team starts to push, I'll dump my stickies to try and get a pick. At this point, if it's safe, I'll replace my traps, or if the other team is still committed into the point, I'll start to sticky spam. If I'm on attack, it is a bit more complicated. If the defending team is playing very aggressively, I will play like I am on defense and wait until I feed enough players into my team before I switch to a more aggressive playstyle. The aggressive playstyle also depends on the map and if there are engineers, but a general description is, I peek the area that the other team is holding to get an idea of where to spam. Once I have had an idea of where the other team is holding, I can start to charge stickies to pressure their hold. Depending on where they are set up and if I have a medic, I might be able to get closer to have a bigger damage output. Careful not to get too close, though. As a demo man, you want to be at a medium range from your opponents. This is pretty much impossible to quantify in a video format since your best positioning is situational, but you will learn with time. To generalize, you'll need to be close enough to deal a lot of damage with your stickies and be able to land pipes. If you are too far away, your stickies will deal a lot less damage due to both damage falloff and longer charge time. Hitting pipes at this range will be difficult as well. Your positioning does not only depend on your weapons, however. The other team's ability to snap you out of existence is an equal factor in this equation. You have to be far enough away that you are safe from aggressive scouts and soldiers, for example. <sighs> and of course, it wouldn't be a TF2 video in 2023 without complaining about Sniper. Like on any other class, you should be avoiding Sniper sightlines whenever possible. You should also try to play on high ground whenever you can, although Demoman is probably the merc best equipped to play on low ground due to his projectile arc. These factors will result in a sweet spot that will allow you to dish out damage and stay alive. Again, you will find your ideal range by simply playing the game. Of course, it's not always possible to be at this perfect range. If you happen to find yourself inside the enemy's personal space, do not fret. You have a golden ticket to safety. Damage surfing. If you didn't know, all damage in TF2 also deals knockback. An experienced player can use the other team's knockback to quickly escape a bad situation. You can do this with rockets, stickies, miniguns, scatter guns, Demonite melees, and pretty much anything that does a lot of damage. Of course, there is a health trade-off for this extra mobility, and it's not possible to hit a surf every time you are in a bad position. The trick to maximize your chance for a surf is to basically treat it like you are rocket jumping and time a jump and crouch to receive more knockback. Damage surfing is an important skill to learn on any class, and in order to get better at it, I recommend you learn how to rocket jump if you don't already know. I should also mention that the more you play, the better you will get at improvising during fights to use surfing to your advantage. Again, I can't really explain this, it's just going to come with time.
Speaking of damage surfing, one of my favorite attacks with the grenade launcher is to use your own self damage to surf out of a pinch. Since I'm a very aggressive player, I find myself using this technique a lot to get back to safety. Alright alright, enough damage surfing, let's talk about damage for a second. While stickies will be your primary source of damage, the grenade launcher is a very powerful weapon in the right hands. My first piece of advice for your grenade launcher is to use your sticky bomb launcher. Let me explain. Hitting pipes is kind of hard. If only Demoman had a zoning tool that allowed him to force his opponents to move predictably. Oh, right. Try to use your stickies to limit your enemy's movement and force them into eating a pipe. If your opponent ignores your sticky and starts to walk onto it, you have set yourself up for arguably the strongest 1-2 combo in the game. Sinking a sticky and a pipe onto a single target. The reason this is so good is because when you time it right, you can effectively one-shot almost all the classes in the game. The opponent also has no opportunity to damage surf away since they will have taken lethal damage in an instant. I should note as well that this combo has a quicker time to kill than if you were to use a second sticky to secure the frag due to a sticky bomb's built-in arm timer. This is just my opinion, but this combo is one of, if not the most satisfying thing to do in TF2. For that reason, I'm making a montage. Another tip for using your grenade launcher, as well as your stickies, is to use your damage to juggle your opponents. It's not possible to reliably sink a lethal amount of damage onto every player you encounter, however you can still use your explosions to influence your opponent's movements. A general tip is to aim for their feet. This will bounce them straight up, making it near impossible for them to dodge. The first and most obvious tip I have for the sticky bomb launcher is, charge your stickies. Many beginner and even intermediate demo mains completely neglect this ability. These players are missing out on an extremely useful poke damage from afar, as well as the ability to sticky snipe low HP players. I typically pre-charge my stickies when I know I will be peeking a corner soon, since I know I can likely expect there to be a target at a range. Of course, if there was somebody up close, you can just aim the charge sticky to be able to use it at close range. This way, when you turn the corner, you have a sticky that can be used for close and long range. The only downside to charging your sticky preemptively is that if your sticky bomb launcher is not fully loaded, you will not be passively reloading. Over time, you will get more consistent with this mechanic, and you will be able to hit some really cool shots. Tip number two is obvious on paper, but again, many new players outright ignore it. You don't need line of sight to deal damage. Take this extremely common NG nest spot on Snowy Coast. I have seen many teams struggle to push this hold. Look at how easy it is to take out the sentry nest as demo man. I mean, I'm hardly even aiming. That was so trivial that I even spam a few more stickies and kill this absolutely clueless heavy. On a similar note, you should also practice using corners and obstacles to avoid taking damage during your fights. This is especially effective versus Heavy since he needs to have prolonged line of sight to deal damage. This is also pretty effective for pipe spam since, unlike sticky bombs, you don't have to detonate your pipes. Before, we talked about sinking pipes and stickies. You can also sink two stickies onto one spot by utilizing the arc of the projectile. For me, this one was a bit hard to get the hang of, but once you do, it is quite powerful since you can effectively one-shot light classes. I should point out that this move is inherently risky since you might be wasting a quarter of your ammo if the stickies do not land near any opponents. And since it takes time for the stickies to go where you intend them to, it is easy to dodge. For this reason, this tactic is more effective if the other team can't see you starting the sink. Lastly, there is the more traditional way of sinking projectiles, while explosive jumping. Oh, they're going to have to glue you back together in hell! This will also take some practice to pull off consistently, but boy, is it worth it. Speaking of bombing as demo, this is a perfect time to talk about when bombing is most viable. Demoman is a great uber target and casual. I'll say that again, but more passive aggressive to get the attention of any medic mains who have made it this far in the video. Demo Man is a great uber target and casual. Demo is also a common uber target and competitive, although it is not advisable for only Demo to be in the uber. Usually you would want to have a hitscan class such as a scout to also be in the uber so they can follow up on any damage from the demo. In casual, this doesn't really matter as much, a solo demo uber is just fine. In fact, it's probably the best way to push problem points such as upward or barn blitz last. I don't have the time today to talk about the extremely nuanced world of proper uber usage since it could be easily another 
oh, 20 minute video of its own. Oh god, this video just hit the 20 minute mark. Uh, just know that on offense, you want to use your uber right before taking a large amount of damage. This usually means popping it right before you have to enter an enemy held choke point, sniper sideline, or a sentry's line of sight. I love to bomb in as a demo when I am ubered since the invincibility negates the steep health cost of sticky jumping. Being up close is usually bad for demo, but being invincible means you can do whatever you want. At closer ranges, hitting your projectiles can be easier and means that they are harder to dodge. Just make sure to be aware of your positioning for when the uber runs out or you might die a horrible death. Also, try and make sure you have most of your ammo reloaded before you use the uber. Not all medics are very aware of this, so just try to do your best to get value out of a bad uber pop. I might have to make a separate video on ubers since there is so much I'm glossing over here, but in any case, let's move on to the final section. Alright, this is going to be a quick fire section since I am sick and tired of talking, but I can't leave these important tips out of the video. Firstly, ammo management. Remember to be cognizant of your ammo reserves as well as what you have loaded. It is quicker to reload your stickies in a row instead of firing a sticky, reloading, firing, etc. Because of this, I find myself following a loop of shoot a bunch of explosives, back up, reload, walk forward, and repeat. Here I just shot a bunch of ammo so I'm low on ammo so I back up to reload my sticky bombs and my pipes and I also want to ask somebody something in chat. Don't forget that Demo Man basically has two primary weapons. You can use your stickies to hit your pipes, or use your pipes when you're waiting on a trap, or so many other combinations. Try not to rely on one or the other too much, although stickies are more reliable. And keep in mind that you should be switching between these two fluidly. If you are 1v1ing a pyro, try to use your stickies. Even if they reflect your stickies, you still haven't truly missed the sticky because of what we talked about before. Also, you still have control over when to detonate the reflected sticky. If you use pipes, you could be putting yourself and your team in danger. Don't forget to bully engineers. You are the best equipped class to deal with turtling Texans. Remember that sticky bombs no longer suffer from damage fall off 5 seconds after being placed. This is mostly relevant for when you're placing sticky traps, but it can come in handy in the middle of a fight as well. Lastly, is a bit cheesy, but play other classes. Playing classes other than demo will over time build your game sense and further improve your demo gameplay. Alright, I'm finally done ranting now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Outros are overrated. Peace out. I think hit skin is more cold. Dude, how is that not a backstab? And I get crit for the Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> I love this game.